First item on the agenda is roll call. Member Joseph Laval. Here. Member Vincent Loria. Here. Member Nicholas Malason. Here. Absent is member Ann Raponi. James Saboni called me, said he would be on his way. He's here now. Member James Saboni. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> member Robert Cassidy is absent. And member Ann Raponi could not make it tonight. First item on the agenda is approval of the minutes of January 3rd, 2018. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Motion by member Nicholas Malason. Second. Second by member Joseph Lavalli. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Voted in the affirmative. <coughs> Next item on the agenda is a public hearing. Uh, 1064 North Shore Road, renovation and conversion of commercial building to 12 apartments, Triple E LLC. Jamie Russo, do I have a motion to open the public hearing? I'll make a motion to open the hearing. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Peter, the floor is yours. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. If you, uh, Put them up so they face the camera. We were doing right here? Yep. And you can face the audience with that, because okay. we'll see it on the monitor. It's been a little while since I've been here, so. I'm going to deal with the weather girl here talking backwards. Here's the uh, green gutter, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Peter. Good evening, everyone. Hi, my name is, uh, for the record, Peter Blaisdell. I'm a civil engineer and land surveyor. Oh, you Royal can turn Office. it around, actually. Uh, which which way's better for you? He switched there. Okay, so you're okay. fine now. Sorry about that. That's all right. I it's can, a camera I can point this way. Um, uh, oh, uh, 189 North Main Street, Middleton, Massachusetts. Um, so, uh, as you know, uh, we have a notice of intent filing before you. Uh, the property is located at 1064 North Shore Road in Revere. Uh, essentially right on the east side of North Shore Road um, at the intersection of Sears Street. Mm -hmm. uh, the property is owned by Triple LLC. Uh, it's, company, uh, excuse me, it's presently a, a vacant building, uh, which was a commercial use. Um, the plan is to renovate the building, uh, change it to uh, 12 uh, apartment units, and part of that is that the building needs to be modified to you know, have handicapped uh, access and that type of thing. Um, but the, the drawing that you see before you up there is just the existing conditions, just to uh, give you an idea of um, some of the uh, resources that the commission itself would be um, uh, interested in. Um, so essentially, the building shown here in this brown color, um, the reason why you see essentially everything else here is gray is because essentially the whole site is impervious with just a very small area in the back, and which is uh, next to Avon Street and then a very small sliver uh, adjacent to the houses next to us. Um, in its present condition, uh, pavement's not in very good condition. It's, it's broken, it's, it's cracked, it's, it's kind of unsightly. Uh, so the applicant would like to um, make this a little bit more attractive, a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Um, so the resource areas that uh, the commission would be uh, interested in are we flag across the street on the city of Revere, Revere, uh, I can't say Revere, Revere's property, um, uh, bordering vegetative wetland, which then goes out back into the marsh. So what we've done is we've added a wetland flag series A1 through A5, which then produces a 100-foot buffer zone, which essentially runs through just this small portion of the property. Um, the other thing that is actually a little bit strange is that we looked up on the uh, MassGIS maps and believe it or not, this line that's shown here is actually a delineation of the approximate location of the Barrier Beach. Even though I think everybody knows that area, it's not functioning as a Barrier Beach right now at all. However, it, it is a resource and it's shown, so we wanted to make sure that you were aware of it. Uh, the big one that uh, you're probably all aware of too is that uh, this whole area has been uh, mapped as within a flood zone, a 100-year flood zone. 
Uh, so according to the latest uh, flood insurance rate maps, the elevation uh, for the 100-year flood in this area is um, 11. Uh, it's, not, uh, it's not subject to wave action, so it's not a velocity zone. Waves aren't going to hit this. Actually, if they do, we're in a lot of trouble. Um, but the idea is that this whole area will flood from probably behind and maybe not directly from the beach. But it is subject to it is land subject to coastal storm flowage to the best of my uh, to the best of my knowledge, and we've we've made a note of that on the point. Um, so those are the resources. There aren't any there aren't any blurring vegetative wetlands or any isolated wetlands. Uh, as you can see, it's, it's a rather small piece of property. It's about 9,900 square feet. And as most of you know, I mean I. I grew up as a kid around this area, not this town, but I've, I've known this building for quite a long time. It's always been essentially just a, a parking lot with a building. And as you can see, the, the building itself is essentially almost built lot line to lot line with an exception in the back. So um, the other thing of note um, is that there is an existing catch basin on the site, uh, which is shown here. And then uh, the applicant had, uh, I believe it was rapid flow, come out the other day and they they pumped it. Um, this drain manhole here has a pump equipped in it, uh, which then discharges to, I believe, an existing catch basin shown here on North Shore Road. However, I guess the pump has been um, out of service for a couple of years, so we'll probably hear from some neighbors later on talking about a little bit of flooding. It probably makes sense that the reason that uh, there's been some extra water down there recently is that the pump is either broken or is not hooked up or no power to it. I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, I have to stuck my head in there to see what's going on, or nor have I had the chance to sort of explore to see what type of pumps are there, but that's something that we can, we can certainly discuss. So that's the existing condition and the resource areas, and um, essentially it's, it's gonna be a redevelopment of you know, somewhat of an unsightly looking building, and we're gonna try to turn this into something better. Um, so I'm just gonna flip this over to the proposed condition. So essentially the whole site remains at the same grade, but what we'd like to do is make it a little bit more uh, aesthetically pleasing. So um, the building itself is really gonna stay the same. Um, there's gonna be some changes to the front entrance uh, for uh, handicapped access, uh, some stairs. Uh, we're gonna realign the parking a little bit. And uh, the other thing we'd like to do is improve the situation here a little bit with some of the runoff. So um, this whole entire uh, embankment here that's next to the sidewalk is all paved, it's in bad condition, uh, it's starting to collapse a little bit, the guardrail is starting to sag, uh, so the applicant would like to uh, fix that. Uh, but in addition to that, we'd like to remove some of that unnecessary impervious area and put in some landscaping. So the plan that you see before you, uh, just to give you an idea, so as I said, the, the existing lot is about 9,900 square feet, in its present condition, there's about 9,300 square feet of impervious area. We'd like to take off about another 600 square feet and remove that and add in some, uh, some plantings and some bushes or just something just to, to make the site a little better. Um, in addition to that, there's a, a rather unsightly fence that um, is a, across one end of the uh, parking lot. The applicant would like to replace that with a more um, probably uh, aesthetically pleasing fence, something that's not, you know, kind of an eyesore, something that's nice. Um, the other thing we'd like to do too is um, reduce some of that runoff that has been heading towards the neighbor's property. Uh, one of the ways we were going to do that is, right now it's basically paved all the way right to the lot line. We'd like to pull that back about three, three or four feet, remove that pavement, uh, excuse me, and add a, um, a landscaping bed uh, so that we can, if any runoff is heading down that area, instead of just rushing running into the fence, it's gonna, you know, at least hit some bark mulch or at least hit some soil where it won't go right into the neighbor's yards. But also, um, that's gonna be graded so everything hits right into that existing catch basin. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman had asked me in an email about the condition of that uh, catch basin. When our surveyors were down there last time, they couldn't see the condition of the pipe because it was full of water. So we've had that pumped out. Uh, I haven't had a chance to talk to the rapid flow to see um, the depth of it or the construction of it, but it's my understanding it's not a deep sump catch basin. So that's something we can talk about if you'd like to see about maybe improving some of the TSS removal here on site. Um, um, but other than that, we're considering this just a redevelopment project. Um, you know, there's really no opportunities that you may see in other sites where um, you really can't infiltrate anywhere, anywhere here on site. Um, it's all sitting on uh, basically 
they don't even have a classification for the soils or anything. They call it udorthans, which can be anything. It's, it's a wet substratum, um, which means we're not really much higher above sea level here. I'm sure the soils here are not very good, uh, probably just uh, marine clays, and you really can't put any dry wells in or try to do anything as far as um, putting in any extra water into the ground. It's not going to go anywhere. Um, so the only way we can really try to improve the site here is just by reducing some of this impervious area and adding some uh, planting beds um, just to try to, you know, alleviate some of the runoff. We did do some calculations um, and put it in the notice of intent. It, it's a very small amount of reduction for the uh, peak rate of runoff. I mean, you're only talking 600 square feet, but still it's an improvement. Um, I think that's covers just about everything. I know Mr. Shannon may have some questions and, and you may have some questions, so um, fire away if you're ready. Thanks, Peter. Uh, questions, comments? Yeah, I have some questions. on uh, Lavalli? Do I have to turn this on? It's on. You think the so? mics are going to be on all the time, so we need to have no chatter. Try to shuffle your papers quietly. <laughs> Go ahead, Joe. Uh, so you don't intend to increase the footprint of the building as from where, what it exists now? No. No. Uh, and and what, it, what is going to be on the ground floor? Um, so right now, when you walk into the building, you actually walk down uh, a few steps, and then you have to go up steps to the second level. So um, the front will essentially be closed off. Uh, and, and I forgot to introduce Mr. Russo is here in case I get anything wrong <coughs> in the building. But essentially, the front of the building is going to be closed off. Um, so you won't actually see where the glass doors are anymore. There's going to be a new entrance up above. And we're going to. Um, the proposal is to pick up the first floor elevation above the 100-year floor, uh, excuse me, above the 100-year flood elevation, up to ele elevation 11.2. Uh, Mr. Chairman had a um, question for me about the final elevation of it, but we can discuss that as well. Just for my own visualization, how much higher would that be than the ground level as it exists right now? Um, so it's kind of a weird question, uh, Mr. Lavalli, because the if you look at, if you're standing in the parking lot facing the building and North Shore Road's on your right, the threshold is at elevation uh, 5.3. It then goes down uh, four or five steps, Jamie? Yeah. It goes down about four or five steps to, that, to a lower building where there's some mechanicals are. But the next level up is at elevation 10.4, or about five feet higher. So that's... Um, that's sort of going to be the main entrance. We're going to modify that so that that threshold would be above the 100-year floor uh, flood elevation, if that makes sense to you, Mr. Lavalli. I'm not sure. If, I'm okay. still trying to visualize that. So, that drops down from. So, yeah, uh, so I, the, I was able to look at the site, yeah, but so, I was on North Shore Road when I was So looking. that normal glass door entrance that you walk in and then you can walk down, that's going to be gone. That, that won't be there anymore. But the upper, the upper entrance will be created so that that's about six feet higher. And what about the access and egress to the parking lot? Where do you intend to have that? Uh, same thing. It's gonna, the entrance is going to be right here, um, right on the Sears Street. That on Sears there. Street, not on North Shore Road? No, not on North Shore Road. OK, thank you. You're welcome, Mr. Anybody else? Yes. Commissioner Savoni? Yeah. Yeah, thank you for the Yep, speak into the mic, Jim. Hello. Not working. Should I talk loud? How's that? Can you hear him, Rick? That's better. <laughs> so, you're not taking any credit. It's a redevelopment <coughs> project. And you're not taking any credit for infiltration, but you're reducing the uh, impervious area. So, I'm just wondering if, if there is a possibility for you to uh, sort of benefit from some of that with some. Uh, Low impact development uh, techniques on the on the site. I, I realize you haven't collected any soil samples because you're just making assumptions on the soil type and area, which is probably adequate. But um, given the reduction in the previous area, I'm, I'm wondering if, if you could get some TSS removal credits or or find some benefit meeting the stormwater standards. And the other, the other comment was, um, it seems like the catch basin is it's more than a minor issue. So um, I'm not sure how there's a pump in there and who installed that pump and 
the background is behind that, but uh, don't know. I think that's something that needs to be resolved. If, so if the pump is, if is no longer functional, you need to um, evaluate a deep sump catch basin or uh, some other alternative. Yeah. So uh, I wasn't even aware there was even a pump here. Um, so that's one of the reasons we wanted to go in and, and jet it and see what was going on. Um, so the pump, my understanding, is not in the catch basin. It's in the next uh, manhole on line towards uh, North Shore Road. Who operates that pump? Uh, I would assume the owner, but Mr. Russo wasn't even aware it's there. He's only owned the property for, he just found out himself. So um, I think what we're going to do is talk to a pump manufacturer. We'll maybe pull the pump, see what's going on, and see if it either needs to be repaired, replaced, or you know what we need to do. I can't hear you, Jim. Who owns the structure that the pump is in? I would assume Mr. Russo does. I did not find any. I did not find any uh, easements or anything like that from any other entity that said that you know anybody else has any rights to come in and uh, maintain the pump or anything. So I assume it's it's his. So. Um, so it's in uh, Mr. Russo's uh, best interest to make sure the pump is operational. Yeah, I, I believe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he doesn't want to have a, uh, a lake out there any more than if he's going to be marketing these apartments. So, um, yeah, this information just, just became available to us yesterday. Uh, so, we're kind of here just to let you know that this is what we just received as well. So, um, we're going we're gonna to push that issue too and see what we can do with it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, may I just continue what, 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 what James was asking? Sure. Just so I have it clear in my head, is, is this a sump pump we're talking about, or is this a pump that pumps into the, the city's uh, drainage? So I think, it, I think it pumps into the North Shore Road oh. drainage system. So th I believe there's a couple of these up and down North Shore Road, uh, and, and again, Mr. DeSantis probably knows more about the drainage down that area than and I do. It, it, so. Mr. Russo? Yeah. And empties onto North Shore Road? No, it, it, there's another catch basin on storm drain on yeah. uh, North Shore Road that we believe it goes from this yeah. manhole, pumps through that storm drain on North Shore Road. Yeah. Not to the surface, Mr. Russo. Not to the surface, underneath. No, I, I yeah. believe it pumps into a structure. Well, in order to do that, wouldn't you have to have had, somebody would have had to have had permission from the city? Uh, yeah, that's. Um, uh, it depends on when it was put in. Or? Discharge. It's not, well, it's not a new discharge. Uh, it doesn't matter. What, when you read it off a property, yeah. you need to evaluate any potential illicit discharge. Yeah, again, I just found out about this. I thought it was gravity. Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm happy to. Uh, we're, ha we're, ha we're happy to work with the city to see what, what happens. You know, what your solution is. And, uh, I am too. I'm looking, forward, I'm looking sure forward to see what my solution is. The commission will be reasonable as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I would assume that if. if um, if that pump was put in there, it was probably put in there for a reason. Um, and if there's been some flooding issues over the last couple of years because that pump is broken, then we could probably all agree that maybe we should look about replacing it. But we'll, we'll talk to the city about it. But where it discharges, that's it. That's well, I think we'll important. I think we'll go pop the um, we'll go pop the other structures out there, maybe the catch basin, and see if it goes into there, and see what the size of the line is, and we can we can determine what the uh, the head is on the pump and see if it's sized correctly or why it failed or how old it, it could be very old. I don't yeah. know. So, you know, I think, um, I think we should, um, uh, what's the plan for uh, development here? What's, what's your schedule? Um, well, first I'd like Mr. DeSantis to give me the permit. Well, I think okay. we may need it. We may need it. No, I don't, I don't know. For you to come back in that next. Well, honestly, tonight I was just wanted to give you the presentation, probably set up a site visit. And then yep, um, DEP, works. I don't even think DEP's even given us a number yet. I checked it yesterday. Uh, I yeah, I meant to check and I forgot. There, was, there wasn't any comments yet, nor were there any, uh, there wasn't even a number. So, I mean, we weren't planning on having this closed tonight by a long shot. So, I um, think we probably need all the uh, commissioners out on site, take a look at it. Okay. I just got a couple of comments and I want to hear from the neighbors. Uh, pump is naturally new to me being introduced tonight, which gives me even more concern about not knowing what kind of sump you have on that catch basin. If you should have an yeah. oil spill or a substantial gasoline spill, you don't even know if there's enough capacity yeah. to contain it in the sump of the catch basin. Now you get a pump that would pump it out. Well, the pump is not in the, is, the pump's not in the catch basin. It's, it's, in, it, the it's in the manhole. 
it's in the manhole, right. but if you're flowing into the catch basin, it gets to the manhole, and then the pump starts pumping. Oh, oh, I th again, I'm not trying. I, I thought you said the, the, the pump was in the, the basin. So no. You're correct. There's no. You don't know what the sump is. There's no is. hood or something. So it may right not now. even be a sump at all. It might be right, right a uh, pipe invert. So anything that spills in there is going to flow right out. I agree. So I would like to see a deep sump catch basin there. The I, air I conditioners think that's, cannot I've talked be to the a grade. Yeah. You're showing the air conditioners at grade. They cannot be at grade. Um, that's being worked on. Uh, it's my understanding that everything's going to be moved to the uh, to the roof. Every time what? The air conditioners are being moved up. Okay. Uh, you had mentioned the hot water heaters below the flood elevation. The hot water heaters are going to remain on the, on the uh, basement Can't floor. Can't do that either. Um, we'll see. I don't know. You, I, you can't have utilities below the flood elevation unless you're going to waterproof the building and there's no indication. I, again, I don't know if it's going to be okay. waterproof. If, if they have well, to I'm be I'm bringing moved. up my question. I, I got you. You got a... Uh, fuel fill in back of the building is that going to be continue to be used? I don't think so. Uh, they still the fuel still fill, Jamie. Bring oil in. What? Is it still going to be oil? There's no oil, so that should be cemented in. The fuel fill that's shown on the back of the building, if it's at grade. The tank has been removed, and when the mason comes to Okay, good. Okay, that's all I got. All right, we've got some neighbors, I think, that would like to speak. Sure. Would you come to the microphone, state your name and address, and voice your concerns? Good evening. I'm attorney Robert Andresano, and this is Joseph Patty, the owner of 28 Bay Road. 28 Bay Road. Okay. What's your last name, Robert? I didn't get Andresano. it. Andresano. I-N-D-R-E-S-A-N-O. And the homeowner is? Uh, Joseph Patty. Joseph Patty. Okay, go ahead. Mr. Patty is a licensed contractor, and he's lived at, uh, he had a business, and he has the apartment at 28 Bay Road, okay? We looked at the plans together, and the plan shows an elevation that's being raised 4.85 on one part of their plan, okay? Um, our question is, by raising that elevation, is that water going to be seeping back down to Bay Road? That's on the far right corner. The far Where the right handicapped corner. parking spot is. Right. In the corner? Yep. Uh, closest to the Harrison House? I see elevation 5 there. Right. But on the existing plan, I see an elevation of 567 there. Okay, but it's a contour line of five on that side. On this side, contour line of five comes into the corner of the parking lot in the building, and it shows on the existing elevation uh, 4.75, so it's a matter of four inches. Right. Okay, so that water's going to be running down? It's bringing it up. It's bringing the elevation of the land up okay. a little bit. They're okay. trying to, uh, I believe their intent is to try and collect all the drainage into the catch basin. Well, that's been a major problem, and uh, the catch basin does not work. How well, long that, is it? That's well, what I was talking oh, about. Oh, I can tell you it has been working for many, many years, and Tripoli's, when they bought the property, um, they did maintain the, the catch basin, and the pump every so often would shut down, not work, because of the breeze going into the pump. And, that, and then, they would just, after a while, they just gave up and bought it. When you say grease, like automotive grease? Uh, no, no, just uh, leaves, you know. Oh, grease. leaves, oh, debris. debris. Oh, the grease. I thought you said grease. So but I was going to bring that out of the issue about the oil uh, collection, if any of the, the uh, vehicles leak oil or something like that. That would be my concern. Yeah, that was the concern I expressed by not having a catch basin that you know has a good something. How, how am I going to be guaranteed? Uh, he's my neighbor. Another one over here. How are we going to be guaranteeing two years from now that this is all going to keep on working? The only thing we could can do. Can we get something in writing from the owner? No, you would not get something in writing. The only thing we can do is put something in the order of conditions that uh, be periodically inspected and maintained in good working condition and it be a perpetual continuing condition 
that uh, rides with the deed to the property. I, I checked the title and the drain in the rear of the said lot, it's okay what the title says, must be kept open and you can put a 12 inch pipe can be inserted and covered up if laid to the line of the grade. That's what the title, this is registered land by the way. The other, the other thing on this is in checking the intent there we found on page 14 that is, as to the runoff it said it was not applicable. Well, that, that's our big problem, is the runoff into the drainage for Bay Road, that it hits into Bay Road. We talked to Mr. Russo, and he said he'd consider putting in a retaining wall that would run a, a, on that line, what's a four foot? I, I would be perfectly happy if we do like a two foot retaining wall above grade level with a four foot fence. It's up to Mr. Russo if this he's here, willing to do that. that. Not gonna come. Yeah, it looks like we're going to continue this okay. hearing to that, next okay. month. Yeah. Uh, they'll come back with a revised okay. plan. That'd be fine. Yeah, we'd have no problem with that. That'd be great. Anything further? Mm -hmm. um, the uh, rooftop on the structure does not have any gutters or downspouts. What do you have for drain? There are, there are drains on the roof that into the building. And down the it's basement. flat roof, right? It's a flat roof, yes. Yeah, yeah, which would be typical. And drains to where? Uh, I believe the roof thing is here. So it's a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you want to check that because if it's connected to sanitary, you're going to get your project done, then the city will come along and tell you you've got to yeah. rip things up to uh, disconnect from sanitary and make sure it goes to storm. No, no, it's not. It, 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 there's a pipe that comes, it comes down into the basement, and it looks, I mean, depending on where the, uh, uh, the entrance You probably want to die, it, Jamie. Yeah. Does that it's have a pump, too? That does not Okay, so yeah, at least you got some head on it from yeah. the... So we get a revised plan would be, you know... Okay. okay All Thank right, you. so you'll be here. Anybody else in the audience would like to speak on this? Council Powers. Council Powers? One of the things that I am... Uh, Introduce yourself, oh, please, uh, John. Not that John nobody Powers, knows 46 you, John Powers, Street, Revere. Thank you. Uh, one of the things that I am uh, interested in is, is that pump. And uh, the building itself is an eyesore. There's no question about it. Uh, there are no parking variances asked for, no special permits. I think the issue focuses on conservation and the uh, drainage system down there. Uh, I would suspect that uh, that uh, catch basin uh, that runs with the water runs into from the pump, uh, may even run over under North Shore Road to the marsh. There's a very good chance that that happens there. And then ultimately, the, you've got the tide gate down there, and uh, you've got the uh, Martin Street tide gate. But one of the things that I would feel very strongly about is that that pump, uh, as part of the conditions, uh, be the responsibility of the developer to uh, make sure that it's maintained properly and uh, they, that's, their, that's their responsibility uh, because the, there is a lot of flooding down in that area. Uh, the good news is that uh, we're going to be redoing the Eastern County Ditch, dragging all the Phragmites out of there and uh, all of the debris that's been thrown in there, and that'll probably start in the spring. Uh, but, so that'll give the, the, the residents down there some relief on Sears Street, Bay Road, that area. However, I, again, I want to make sure that uh, that pump is maintained. I think that's a, that's a key issue here, uh, because you don't want to find out that there's water running off of that parking lot affecting any neighbors. Uh, in the area down there. So that's, that's my main concern. I'm, I'm not against the project. Uh, I think it'll probably be an asset once it's completed. But again, I'd want to make sure that pump, I can't emphasize that strongly enough that that pump be maintained. And so noted, John. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Anybody else in the audience? Do I have a motion to continue? I'll make a motion to continue. Oh, before you um, continue, Mr. Chairman, do you want to set up a site visit? Uh, want to do a site visit? 
Yeah, I mean, you don't, they don't have to if you want to go buy it on your own. What's the will of the commission? I'd say we'll make a site visit. Sure. Okay, the next meeting is the 7th of March. Uh, Saturday before that's the 3rd. Does that work for everybody? 9 o'clock on the 3rd. Nine AM, Peter. On March third. And we have a motion by uh, member Malason. Yes, sir. To continue. To Second. March seventh. And that was second by member Saboni. All those in favor? Aye. Vote in the affirmative. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is a public hearing, DEP file 061. I don't think we have a file number yet for the, yeah. 320, 327 Viv Beach Boulevard, demolition of existing structures and construction of mixed use development consistent of 145 residential units and 2,500 square feet of restaurant retail with parking on the grade. Mr. Salvo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Uh, for the record, Rick Salvo with Engineering Alliance. Um, on behalf of the Ash Family Limited Partnership and HR Development and the NRP Group, um, we're here to respectfully request that this matter be continued until the March hearing. And we're still working with some of the abutters. Um, just want to make sure we bring the, the right plan uh, to the commission. Do I have a motion to uh, postpone this to uh, March hearing? I'll make a motion. I'll second it. Motion by member Lavalle, seconded by member Malayson. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Voted. And while I have Thank Mr. You. Salvo uh, at the podium, uh, he's also here on a partial certificate of compliance, the last item on the agenda. So I'd like the permission of the commission to take it out of order. I'll make a motion to take it out of order. That was Vincent? Yes. I'll second it. Let's just continue to the next meeting. Okay. All those in favor? <coughs> mm -hmm. Any second. opposed to uh, take uh, item number seven out of order? All set? Yeah. Great. Uh, thank you again, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. For the record, Rick Sell with Engineering Alliance. Uh, here this evening uh, with Roy McDowell and Eric Swenson of Baystone Development. Um, as you know, they have the project, the Beach House, at 526 to 546 uh, Revere Beach Boulevard, um, which is down closer to the Point of Pines ends of, end of the beach, directly adjacent to Seaview Towers. Um, this project was before you uh, back in 2016. Uh, construction commenced in the, in the spring of 2016. Um, it consists of uh, uh, as you know, a, a multifamily residential building, five stories of wood frame construction over two podiums uh, of uh, parking containing about 234 units. Um, they are ready to seek temporary occupancy for the first 159 units, which is the um, tower that's closest to um, Seaview Towers. Um, <clears throat> the access will be via the um, the driveway that's on the north side of the uh, site, it's, it was a previous paver driveway, it's all installed. Um, the uh, parking lot in the back is up to binder, all the drainage facilities are in, all the infiltration uh, facilities are in for those particular structures. Um, there's also a roof infiltration system um, in the front of the building that's been installed, just waiting to install the overflow connection um, across the street. Um, I don't know if any of you have been by the site. It's, um, it's nearing um, substantial completion on the outside. Obviously, we're not at the point yet where we can request a final certificate of uh, compliance because we won't be landscaping, obviously, until this, um, this spring. Uh, but um, in conversations uh, with Mr. Chairman, he wanted us to come in and at least request a partial certificate of compliance uh, for the work that has been done. We have been to site plan review to talk to other department heads um, we've supplied the city engineer um, with the information that he was looking for relative to the pressure tests and disinfection tests for the water system, sewer system, uh, drain system, um, and, and that sort of thing. So we don't have an as-built to date just because the site isn't completely finished yet. Um, 
but we're here tonight um, to, to request um, a, a partial certificate of compliance with the remaining work items being the overflow connection across Riviera Beach Boulevard and really just the installation of the landscaping. Um, all the other systems are installed um, and operational. Um, and at that point, we'd be bringing you a completed as-built plan uh, for the final grading um, and, and that sort of thing. So right now, the, um, the first occupancies are set for, I believe, February 17th. Yes. Um, so we're hopeful that the commission would consider the issuance of a partial certificate of compliance, or if you didn't want to issue a partial certificate of compliance, just understand where we're at and we're happy to We'll be back in, you know, probably about June to request a, a final certificate of occupancy, uh, certificate of compliance, excuse me, once all the landscaping is in and, and starting to take. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Mr. Salvo? Yeah, no, Member I, Saboni? I'd like to recommend to the Commission uh, that we do not issue a partial certificate of compliance because we haven't seen any plans with regard to the stormwater treatment system at all. We're just going on the road alone, so. Well, he want, he's got people moving in, and I need to sign off on the occupancy in order to do that. So if the commission will give me permission to sign off on the occupancy, I don't have a problem uh, not doing a partial certificate of uh, compliance. Well, it's the will of the commission. And, and certainly the partial certificate of compliance could note that a, fi that a final um, certificate of compliance will not be issued until proof of the drainage system is submitted to the commission. I mean, it's, you're allowed to keep outstanding items on its purpose of the parcel, so whatever the will of the commission is. I just didn't want to be in a situation where people are moving in and nothing's been brought forward to the whole board. I didn't want to act on my own. So I say, you know, I mean, like James, we want to know too, we want, we don't want to just take a word for it. We issue the parcel. But he needs before he gets the final. He needs to prove to us what's been, you know. Yes. Mean, yeah. He's got to come back. Yeah. Make that a yeah. condition of the parcel that they need to show proof of what they've done. Yeah. You know, not that he's going to lie, and I don't think the developer's going to lie of a, a multi-million dollar project. But we'd like to know for sure. Yeah, we've got a letter from Mr. Salvo that says what's been done, and I think I sent that to everybody. Yep. Yeah, I mean, we've stamped and certified it, we've inspected it all, but yeah, that's, that's more than reasonable to actually explicitly write right on it that, you know, the final COC won't be issued until an as built plan, you know, certifying the Yeah, what it says. I've not checked. certified it and stamped it, but w w I'm happy to. I, that's fine. What I checked is partial certification is hereby certified that only. The following portions of work regulated by the above reference or conditions have been satisfactorily completed. The project areas are work subject to this partial certification that have been completed a release from the sorter or occupancy for first phase of construction. Site is rough created. All catch basins, trench drains, CDS waste quality inlets have been installed per plan. The front and rear infiltration facilities have been installed per plan. See certification by engineer. Does that satisfy your concern? Yes, it does. Good. Do I have a motion to issue? Could I ask a question? Uh, yes, uh, you can. Do you want to do this part first? Well, ask your question before anybody uh, says hi. anything. So you mentioned it, you're wondering if anybody goes by the site, and I have, I do all the time because I'm also a resident in the city. Sure. And I have a question uh, for both of you. Uh, you intend to have residents moving in this month, is that right? Yes. Okay, right now, uh, and they're going to have a place to park uh, under the building? Yes. Because right. right now, all of the workers are parked on the boulevard, we on both sides. So done. evidently, you people haven't had access for these workers because they've been on parking on the boulevard. Yes, there's going to be a, uh, the building has 366 parking spaces indoors, of which the uh, Roy, why don't you come up to the microphone, please? Excuse me. <clears throat> Roy McDowell, <clears throat> based on development. Uh, the building has 366 parking spaces indoors. We have 12 additional outside. For the initial occupancy, we're going to allocate 145 parking spaces at the lower level. So we'll have more than enough parking. Well, I would like to know why you couldn't have made it possible for the workers to park down there 
in all of these ensuing months, including snow months and everything else, well, so that the boulevard wouldn't have been cramped with workers going back and forth and trucks out there and everything. It's terrible out there. I, I can appreciate that. And that'll be waning very shortly. Uh, we couldn't do that because there was so much work going on with inside the garages between construction, storage materials, equipment going back and forth, plumbing happening. It would have been a dangerous situation actually to have cars parked in that it would garage. Be less dangerous if you had a detail out there. You had, coffee, you had construction workers stopping traffic in, in the middle of rush hour. I will bring that up. To, I'll bring that up to the, the general. State police starts are right down the street. I will bring that up to the contractor. Thank you. Anything else? Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Motion by Nick, member Nicholas Malation. I'll second. Second by Vin Laria. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So voted. Great. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Appreciate you taking us over. Do you have an occupancy certificate with you? Uh, we do not. We're waiting for the department. Okay. Give me a call when you get it. Thank you very much. I can sign off. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Next item on the agenda is a public meeting, request for termination of applicability, City of Revere, Beachfront Seals Creek, Sewer Improvements, Magdalena Lofted, is here from uh, CDM Smith to present on this. So he picks it up on the camera and, uh, oh actually he can pick it up this way, show it to us. Because you said the plan changed from the one we had in the, uh, there's nobody in the audience so might as well show it to us and he can pick it up uh, anyways. So my name is Magdalena Lofsted. I'm a wetland scientist with CDM Smith. And with me tonight, I have uh, Kara Johnston, who is the design engineer, also with CDM Smith. And we're here on behalf of the city of Revere, our client. Uh, we filed a request for determination of applicability for the Beachmont Sales Creeks Neighborhood Sewer and Drainage Improvements Project. Um, the proposed work will partially take place in um, land subject to coastal storm flowage, um, the 100-year floodplain elevation, which is at elevation 6 in this project area. So I'm going to hand it over to Kara, and she's going to give you a, uh, a description of the proposed work. Thank you, Maggie. Uh, so this GIS drawing here shows the existing infrastructure in the neighborhood. Um, the project is a sewer and drainage improvements project. Uh, so there's a number of issues going on with the existing sewer system. Uh, the sewer is extremely shallow and the pipes are not properly sloped. They're not meeting minimum slope. So um, with that, there's been a number of concerns. Um, you have freezing concerns because of the shallow pipe. We have backup concerns um, and we've had odor complaints from neighbors. Um, I've Sure there. So there's been a number of odor concerns in the neighborhood from neighbors uh, and the city engineer has also received odor complaints from neighbors. Uh, so this project will help to alleviate those problems. So the sewer replacement will occur on Jones Road, George, Henry and Dolphin Avenue. Uh, the sewer will be removed and replaced on Jones uh, and be pitched via gravity to Winthrop Parkway and the remaining portion of the neighborhood will be sent uh, via gravity to a new pump station to be located on a city-owned parcel uh, that's called Lot 1A on Jones Road. Uh, that pump station, uh, the top elevation of the hatch will be above uh, the 100-year flood elevation, which is six, so the top of the hatch will be at elevation seven. To be sure we're above that, and um, the site will be graded accordingly to make sure, um, to make sure we meet that. Uh, there will be one small driveway added on that pump station site uh, in order for DPW to be able to access the station and operate it and maintain it. Uh, there will be crushed zones surrounding an infiltration trench in order to accommodate for that flow from the driveway. The wastewater will then be pumped from the pump station to, through a new force main to an existing sewer manhole on Atlantic Avenue. In addition to the sewer work, the city is also doing drainage repairs in this neighborhood. Uh, the drain will be primarily uh, 
by be primarily lined, the pipe will be primarily lined in order to restore structural integrity. It will be removed and replaced as needed where there are collapses, as well as uh, to bring the pipe up to a 12 inch minimum when it's under, under that size. Uh, in addition to that, the city will also be redirecting any inflow private sources such as sump pumps, roof drains that are illegally connected to the sewer system currently and will be tying them into the drain if they cannot be safely splashed on the private property. Um, and also one more note on the drain, the city also intends to uh, clean two cross country drain lines and I'll just point to them quickly. Uh, the lines that go into Dalton Avenue and River Parkway as well as the line that goes across Endicott Avenue under State Road in order to ensure that those lines are clean where we'll be uh, collecting and sending the drainage. And with that, we can answer any questions. Louder if you could. Sorry. So the process of lining the pipes, that's part of the administrative consent order uh, for the city of New York, correct? Uh, a lot of the sewer work, sewers have been lined in the city. The drainage will also help that. Um, so currently the existing sewers have cracks in them and there could be wastewater leaking in into the drain. So, so we will be lining in order to prevent. Part of the consent. Exactly, yep. Okay. So we'll be lining to prevent any of those. The additional. Um, Flushing, can you explain um, the rationale for that and how that supports the, your existing project? Sure, and I'll just point again. So the existing drainage here is flowing through this system and it all goes through this pipe, so we want to make sure that this pipe is clear uh, and can handle all of the flow that's currently supposed to be flowing there and will continue to flow there. So and what is that discharge to? That discharges to the structure over on Washburn Ave, which discharges over to Dale Street. I think this is correct. So what's the additional flow once you line the pipes? So it's existing flow. We're not adding the additional. Right, but you, you have infiltration now. So you'll be reducing the overall flow. Is that correct? Well, you have infiltration into the pipe. That's why you're lining the pipe. We're removing your place in the sewer, which has infiltration. Right. So You'll be reducing the uh, infiltration by, do you have an estimate on the amount? Infiltration into the sewer? Yeah. Uh, no, we don't have that amount. You said you don't what? We don't have the value for the infiltration oh, okay. into the sewer. Yeah, but you're going to be remo removing, removing sources of inflow. Sewer. You're going to have tighter pipe, so you're going to have an increase uh, in the drain. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Could be minor. Yes. It's existing. It's not existing. Uh, there are, yes. But probably the uh, it's not biggest a significant increase. inflow is when you have a uh, hundred year storm right. and the area floods. Right. So if it handles that, it, well, it doesn't handle it, uh, but it will over time drain it when the waves stop over yeah, it'll time. It'll be a minor increase. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, yeah, will there be any, uh, uh, <coughs> at Seals Creek, will, will there be any monitoring after the construction activities? Because when you use RCP to um, seal the pipes, isn't there often times um, contaminants associated with the curing process? Um, you're talking about the drainage. Uh, so when you line a pipe, you use, you use a, um, yeah. an epoxy, yeah, so the which in, in the past when I've, when I've done that and it discharges to resource areas, you need, you need to sometimes pump, uh, the, you need to block the pipe off exactly. yep. after you seal it yeah. and you need to pump that water out of the pipe okay. into a storage container and then sample it to be disposed off site. Exactly. So we do have a structure where we'll be able to do just that. The project will be required to do that. That's the structure here. That that won't be able to be able to use the same street. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Because the, the, the lighting is not continuing to, to discharge the water. Right, but it doesn't matter. Right. But right, but they'd still be required to do that anyhow. Yep. Okay. 
You had a question, sir? Mr. Mr. Chairman, the notes this, this is an RDA because right, so, it's municipal work. Uh, so I would like to see that as condition. Sure. Are we all set? Yes. Uh, hi. hi. You, uh, did you say you're adding a new pumping station? A new wastewater pumping station. Would you point it out, please? Thank you. And what's on that location now? Uh, no structures or anything on that lot. And it's uh, state property, city property? It is in city property. Yeah. City? city? So the abutters have um, the needed property first. You were going to show me? And it's city property, huh? City owned property, yeah. Well, that's good to hear. Yeah. Um, also, could you give me a uh, starting date and how long you intend this project to, sure. so to we'll last? Sure. Uh, we're going to bid at the end of March, early April. This is under the SRF uh, state DEP loan, so we are subject to those deadlines. And the construction will take place over this summer um, and then we'll be final paid in the fall of the year. So a, a year project? Uh, the Approximately? The I see. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? <clears throat> we have a motion to uh, determine the negative uh, determination. The area described in the request is subject to protection under the Act. Since the Act described therein meets the requirements for the following an exemption as specified in the Act and the regulations, no notice of intent is required. 310 CMR 58, subsection 6, maintenance of municipal infrastructure. And I'll put in a condition for uh, capturing, uh, curing water from drain pipe lining. Great, thank you. All motions were negative. Motion by uh, James? James yeah, yeah, I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Vote in the affirmative. Okay, thank you. Thank you very See, much. Say your last name was Johnson? Johnston. Yeah. Johnson. Like Miles Johnson. Uh, look at you. Excuse me? Oh, with a T. Okay, so not like Miles Johnson. Close though. A Kara, K A R A. Would you like the uh, updated yes, please? I just said to him, right, Kara? Yes. Thank you. Next item is another request for termination for the city of Malden. I told them they didn't need to show. Very simple. Wow. It's their uh, paving Lawrence Street in Malden, which intersects with Lynn Street in Revere. Thank you. Which is in the flood zone. So they cross the city line a little bit as they go into the intersection. So they're just reclaiming, uh, not reclaiming, uh, coal planing and uh, paving. So I said that falls under IDA. I told them uh, you didn't even need to send it, spend right. the money on hiring somebody. So I have a vote on this one? I'll make a motion. motion. Yeah. I'll, I'll second it. I think that's exempt, like paving activities. Yeah. Exempt. Who made the motion? Nick. I made it. Nick. Nick. And second by Vin? Yep. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Adjournment. Motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. That I'll by Vince? It. Yep. Second? <laughs> Nick second. Nick second. Oh, we got to sign this one first. Yep. All those in favor? Adjourn. Aye. 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 Is it designed at 756?